let's get to the rest of the Week 11 card. And Raheem, I know you have this one already pulled up. I feel like you have maybe a sticky note that you cross out and you just add an extra win. Anytime we talk about Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs as underdogs, while we are in that particular spot here on Week 11, as the Chiefs go to Buffalo to take on Josh Allen and the Bills. Now, you'll have the trend for what the Chiefs are as underdogs, and you will share with the audience. I am going to remind everybody, though, the Buffalo Bills in the regular season have beaten Kansas City in two consecutive years. Take that for what it's worth. Beat them last year in controversial fashion, which really spearheaded the Buffalo comeback in winning the AFC East. If you remember the game, Kadarius Tony being offside, the whole deal there. Buffalo went into Arrowhead two years ago and beat them. We know in January it's a much different deal, but we're not in January. We're in the middle of November. It's going to be November the 17th when they play. Raheem, give us the Mahomes underdog trend. And while you're at it, who do you like between the Chiefs and the Bills? Patrick Mahomes is now 12-1-1 against the spread as our underdog. I always say it all the time. You don't get extra money from fading Patrick Mahomes. So, look, this, this game's tough for me, though, because, you know, when I look at this matchup, the Chiefs, they're clearly overperforming. They're a 9-0 and team who is performing like a team who has won six games according to their point differential. But then when you look at the Buffalo Bills, there's a lot to be concerned about. They have cluster injuries at wide receiver. Keon Coleman has already been ruled out. I don't know what's going on with Amari Cooper. Dalton Kincaid, he got injured last week, so we don't know if he's playing. And if you're going in with cluster injuries against a Steve Spagnola defense, I just don't know how you overcome that. Now, he, the Bills were able to overcome these injuries against the Indianapolis Colts, but Joe Flacco basically spotted this team 17 points last week. So I don't know if they're going to be able to do that against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. So I would be looking towards the Chiefs, but I got to remind everybody, my motto actually makes the Buffalo Bills minus two and a half to three-point favorites. So from a numbers perspective, there's a reason why the Bills are favorite here. But at the same time, I refuse to to bet against Patrick Mahomes in these spots. It's just not a winning, it's not a positive expected value wager long term. So I'm staying off of this game right now. Maybe that'll change on Sunday, but I would probably lean towards the Chiefs. Yeah, Dream's point is the right point, uh, JJ. You 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 don't get any extra credit for fading Patrick Mahomes. I have one way that I want to play this. I've already played it, and I honestly think across the Week 11 slate, there are a ton of games that line up so beautifully with the teaser leg. If you're going to give me... I feel like we've been saying this a lot the last couple of weeks, well, Austin. For what it's worth, it's been profitable. They've it's, been hitting. It's been profitable. Yes, sir. We've been we've been cashing some of these. That Chargers-Dallas, I mean, Chargers-Eagles last week was a giant winner. Didn't have to sweat that for 10 seconds. But look... Give me the Chiefs plus the eight and a half. I mean, we can go into the X's and the O's. I do like the situation of that Chiefs defense coming in third rushing defense by DVOA numbers, number three in the entire NFL. And with the injuries that, that Buffalo is experiencing in its receiving core, do they want to try and establish the run? Yes, they do. Are they going to be able to do against this Chiefs defense? Probably not. So I like the way the X's and the O's line up. But really, just give me the Chiefs plus eight and a half. I'll find another delicious leg to pair that with. Maybe two legs. Could be three-legger. But look, uh, just keep it simple. Let's do over a touchdown for the Chiefs and and, and figure out a way to make some cash, JJ. I have no problem with that. Um, I fully expect this to be a close game. I think Buffalo's going to win, guys. I mean, here's why. If Kansas City wins this game, then I am fully on board with the idea that they might run the table this year. Despite the fact that Raheem nailed that they are clearly outperforming what they should be doing with the way they've pulled a couple of these games out of the fire. The Denver game, the Atlanta game, the Baltimore game. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to bore you. Every single one of these Chiefs games, it feels like it plays out in similar ways and it's the same old song and dance. I just think Buffalo is not going to be intimidated. They've played them a bunch. They've had success against them in the regular season. And I just think the angle of getting the revenge spot, being back at home, Allen, Mahomes, it's 
Guys, uh, this will not be my wisest wager. I'm telling you right now, it won't be. But what's my gut feel? My gut feel is Buffalo is going to win the game. I, I do, Raheem. I, th- I don't think Kansas City is going 17-0 this year. And I just think they have been playing with fire the last few weeks. Sooner or later, you're going to lose the game here, right? Like, it's got to happen eventually. So you mentioned something interesting. Because right now, if you guys go on FanDuel Sportsbook, under win specials, they, they have the Kansas City Chiefs' first loss of 2024-2025 regular season. And they have odds for those. But they also have odds for the Kansas City Chiefs to go 17-0. and And that is priced at plus 800. So you guys should look at those odds if you want to grab that. But they also have their first loss of the season. I mean, they got Carolina Panthers plus 13-1. to Las Vegas Raiders plus 15-1. to Chargers seven, plus 750. Cleveland Browns plus 11-1. to Houston Texans 12-1. to Pittsburgh Steelers 15 to 1. And then finally, week 18, the Broncos 23 to 1. So go on fans and do a sports book right now. If you think they beat the Buffalo Bills, maybe there's some juicy odds for, you know, going 17 and 0. Or maybe you want to pick your spot on one of these other games. You know, the only thing that would give me hesitation, House, and thinking about the Chiefs going undefeated, they play this weird schedule quirk. Because of the fact that the M- the NFL is like, we're playing Christmas Day. We don't care if it's a Wednesday. We're going to have a gazillion people watching. We know the deal. But the Chiefs play like a Saturday, Wednesday scenario. Mm. Yes. Against good teams, too. They're playing it's the Houston Texans on, and then they're playing the Steelers. Right. Yeah, that's and right. And they, as important and as cool as it might be to say, hey, we're the first ones to go and do it. Man, from an injury standpoint, if you have any guys that are nicked up and any guys that are questionable... If they got everything locked up, including a one seed, why are you going to go bolts to the wall in those games? It makes no sense. Makes no sense whatsoever. And I honestly, I've advocated, I think, on the Bill Simmons podcast, the Chiefs, if I were the Chiefs, I would go ahead and try and take care of business at that Saturday game against the Texans and then just punt that Steelers game. Put in, get get everybody on the practice squad up and let them go play on Christmas on national TV. They, they get absolutely nothing out of taking that that giant risk proposition uh and and trying to win that game uh, you know congratulations on on the you know undefeated regular season if they lose in the first round because their guys are all bashed up from trying to recover from that christmas game um i'm just not buying it the only thing house that i would say though if they take that game off and we have plenty of time to discuss the ad nauseum of this that would mean, because week 18 would roll around and in Kansas City, we're talking about them potentially getting a bye, that you'd be going almost a month without playing football. That's 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 a long time. So you want to tell me, maybe then that puts a little more pressure on getting guys out there in week 18 to play them. You know what I mean? If there's any team in the entire NFL that I'm not worried about preparation-wise, depending on you know a rest situation, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. I get it. I get it. That's a long time, though. To go from basically December 25th or whatever it is, the 21st to middle of January, that's, get it, it's a long, long time. But we got time for that. We got time for that. But you know what? I think we may be getting ahead of ourselves because right now the Kansas City Chiefs are 9-0. and And you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, they are 7-2. and And if the Chiefs lose one of these games, that Week 17 game could actually mean home foot advantage throughout the postseason. That's a great point. Well, a great that point. is a good transition, Raheem, because we are going to get to the Ravens and the Steelers in a game that, historically speaking, is always a three-point game. They gave us a three-and-a-half early in the week. That disappeared immediately. Now it is at three. You know what's interesting, Raheem? This game normally is low-scoring. It's height. It's, it's 16-13. It's 2017. The Steelers have been a little better on offense. The Ravens' strength of the team is their offense, not their defense. I could see Steelers-Ravens having sneaky over potential. Can you see a world where we have some points with the Steelers and the Ravens for a change? I can definitely see that world. And I'm looking at my model right now as you say that. And I actually have this closer to 50 than the market does. I mean, the market has this at 47 and a half, 48 right now. This opened at 45 and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook, and people are betting this game up. And we all know this Ravens offense is for real. They're averaging 30 points a game and 7.1 yards per play. 
this offense is serious. And if you ask me, when you look at this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, it's not like they've played juggernauts defensively. We watched Dak Prescott absolutely carve this team up. So if the, the, the Cowboys were able to do that, what are the Ravens going to be able to do? Now, the caveat on that is that if you look at historically between these two teams, Lamar Jackson's really struggled against the Steelers team. He's one and four straight up against the Steelers in his career. Passer rating of 66.8, 870 yards, four touchdowns, seven interceptions in five games. And you look at the point totals, 10 points, 16 points, 19 points, 24 points, and 14 points. Now, you have to ask yourself, is this Ravens offense with Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry going to be different against this Steelers defense? I don't know what the question is. I don't know what the answer is to that question. That's something that you have to figure out. Well, part of the thing that's going to help uh, factor into the to the thinking and the analysis, Alex Highsmith, I believe, has been ruled out. And if he's out, that's a very significant uh, diminution of, of the overall efficiency of that Pittsburgh defense because he's been in, incredible. Uh, the last seven of these games has gone under. So if you want to just play like, you know, basic regression then over is, is the right way to play it. But it, there is the, the numbers are incredible for the underdog in this series. Incredible for Pittsburgh as the dog in this series. Uh, Tomlin has been uh, outrageous underdogs, 10, one and one against the spread nine and three straight up in the last 12 matchups. Each of the last five times that the Steelers have arrived as an underdog, they've won outright. Uh, and you can go through all of the 20 years of Mike Tomlin up against uh, John Harbaugh. When these two guys go against each other, the underdog is 23, 6, and 3 against the spread. Kudos to both of these two boys being head coaches for as long as they have. A real sample size for us to take a look at, but you got to have something on the Steelers as a dog. You can't you can't just ignore um, the way that these, these tight division matchups have gone uh, over, over history here. Totally get it. And some trends mean a lot more than others. The Steelers and the Packers. Steelers because they fit the model in the mold of, hey, take the underdog in a Ravens-Steeler game. Packers obviously fit the mold of just being able to dominate Chicago. A lot of trends throwing your way here on East Coast bias. All right, we'll, we got one more game to get to. Cincinnati and the Chargers. Thank goodness this game got flexed into Sunday night. We don't have to sit there in a standalone audience and watch the Jets and the Indianapolis Colts. Thank you, NFL. Thank you, schedule makers. House, this line stinks to the high heavens. Everyone is going to bet Cincinnati. My initial lean was I'm going to bet Cincinnati. And the more and more I've thought about this game, the more and more I've become hesitant on that particular idea because of how well coached and how tough the Los Angeles Chargers are now with Jim Harbaugh coaching the team. Raheem, you already called it. The divs are for you, amigo. You called this the rat line of the week for week 11. House, where do you stand on a desperate Cincinnati team with extra rest getting ready for Harbaugh and the Chargers? Yeah, so I was in the same place as you. I thought that I was going to get super invested in Cincinnati and that we were going to pull uh, the skirt up for the Chargers and, and see exactly what is underneath there, not be very impressed. Uh, Bengals are 5-0 and against the spread on the road thus far uh, this year. But he here's the problem for me with backing the Bengals. Justin Herbert is getting healthy. And Justin Herbert, you know, uh, is, is is moving the ball down the field we are looking at this cast of unknown receivers for the chargers that are now becoming knowns because uh justin herbert is getting the the ball to them the the bengals inability to to run at all um it means that the chargers get to just t tee up and tee off on, on burrow uh i don't i don't like it we just watched the ravens go up against the the bengals offensive line and they they bang burrow quite quite significantly i don't i don't like this idea of this chargers defense you know pinning its ears back and getting after them you know the bengal's have four wins this season their four wins are against teams that have nine total victories so this chargers team is a different class uh i can't back the bengal's i don't think i think this line is too low so my model actually makes the chargers three and a half to four point favorites and they're laying one and a half now. and 
if you look at how people are betting, the whole world is betting on the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm seeing 84% of the bets and 94% of the money on the Cincinnati Bengals. And it makes sense because the Cincinnati Bengals, they have the more dynamic offense. They're a team who have Joe Burrow. They have Jamar Chase. They have T. Higgins. But they just played the Ravens, who are 30th in adjusted defensive EPA per play. The Chargers aren't 30th. Like, this team is second in defensive EPA per play. So this is a big step up in class defensively. And look, one thing that we've known about the Cincinnati Bengals all year long is that they could lose to anybody. And I mean literally anybody. They lost to the New England Patriots. Like, the Patriots team is not good. Like, this team is just not what people think they are. They're not a good defense. And I just think the Chargers, they should be power rated higher. Now, I am a little concerned about the Chargers because this is not a team that's played the best competition, but I think they should be higher favorites than this. So I would be looking towards the Chargers personally, but I know the public is going to be all over the Cincinnati Bengals. Here's my only pushback with the Chargers. I get everything you're saying about Cincinnati. The Chargers, Raheem, have not exactly had a murderous row schedule, to, to be fair. I mean, if I look, they played Tennessee last week. They played Cleveland two weeks ago. Like, I know we talk about Cincinnati not beating anybody. Totally, totally justified. The Chargers are kind of in that same boat. They've just won a couple more games. Does that scare you at all with some of their metrics maybe being inflated because of a very, very soft schedule? That does scare me. And I think that's the reason why I haven't necessarily made this a definitive pick. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, what are the Cincinnati Bengals? The Cincinnati Bengals, at this point in time, they may be on par with some of those teams in, in which the Chargers have beat. So I know they have the you know the big-name quarterback and the sexy wide receiver and everything like that, but the defense is as bad as any defense in this league. So... I, I think sometimes you just kind of have to hold your nose and just, you know, make the play based on the numbers. And I think that's what I may end up doing. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, but that's where I may find myself.